Hello, and welcome to today's webinar on consumer awareness and protection. My name is Ruchika Singh, and I'm the project coordinator at Costi. I will be your presenter for this webinar. Thank you for taking the time out and being here. We are going to cover these following topics in this webinar. So we will be looking at consumer awareness, consumer protection, cybersecurity, credit report and score, consumer rights and responsibilities, and also scams. Consumers have the right to information, the right to choose, the right to safety. Let us learn more about consumer rights, responsibilities, and the consumer awareness in detail. Consumer awareness is an act of making sure that the buyer or the consumer is aware of the information about the products, goods, services, and consumer rights. Consumer awareness is, is important so that the buyer can take the right decision and make the right choice. The Consumer Protection Act is provincial legislation that governs consumer transactions in the province of, province of Ontario. Its intention is to prevent consumers from being taken advantage of through unfair business practices. Many options exist in urban areas for phone and internet services. There are bundling and family plans too. Be sure to research all the options and understand all the details of any contract before you sign it. Free internet can also be used at local libraries if you have a library membership. Also, they can be used in coffee shops or restaurants that offer free Wi-Fi. Canada Post Corporation, is, which trading at, uh, as Canada Post, is a crown corporation which functions as the primary postal operator in Canada. You can send and receive packages at Canada Post retail stores in all cities and towns. You can manage and pay bills online with Canada Post e-postal service. The website for Canada Post is www.canadapost.com. Buying food. There are a lot of places where you can buy food. The first one is grocery stores and supermarkets, convenience stores, small fruit and vegetable markets, Butchers and bakery shops also have food options. If you cannot afford to buy food, Ontario has local food banks where people in financial difficulty can get free groceries. You can speak to a settlement counselor or you can also call Feed Ontario at 416-656-4100 or visit feedontario.ca. To find a settlement worker, you can go to settlement.org and the options are listed there. Consumer protection. We all play a role in consumer protection. The government sets laws to protect consumers and companies must follow those laws to protect customer and employ information. However, everyone in Canada must take steps to protect themselves. Looking at identity theft. This is when a person uses your personal information without your permission to commit a crime. Identity thieves may use your identity to steal your money or your credit card to make purchases. They may also use your identity to commit other crimes in your name. There are many ways that thieves can steal your identity. They can take mail from your mailbox, steal your wallet, your purse, or your bag. Thieves can also take papers and important documents from your home, car, locker, or even your garbage and recycling bin. Therefore, that it is very important to keep all the documents mentioned on the slide in a very safe place. You should take care of your social insurance number, your driver's license number, your health card number, credit card and banking information, your bank card, your birth certificate, passport, and your visa and study 
format. Moving on to consumer protection, you should only give your SIN, which is a social insurance number to your employer, government agencies, and financial institutions. Check your bank and credit card statements regularly for strange activity. If you lose your wallet, cancel your credit cards and report the loss of your identification immediately. The Office of Consumer Affairs provides information on many consumer protection topics, and you can visit them at www.consumerinformation.ca. The Canadian Anti-Fraud Centre collects and shares information on consumer fraud, and you can visit them at www.antifraudcenter or centerantifraud.ca. Cybersecurity is how you protect yourself online. Cybersecurity also includes protecting your computer and other devices. Some of the uh, tips to follow here are please use strong passwords when you uh, are choosing a password. Use a good antivirus software on your device. Always log off websites, especially when you're using a bank website. Do not share your passwords or your personal information number. Do not click on attachments or links in emails from unknown senders because you don't know what they are. A credit report is something which is created the first time when you borrow money or apply for a credit card. Lenders send information about your accounts to companies called credit bureaus or credit reporting agencies. The credit bureaus compile the information into an ongoing record of how to use credit. In Canada, there are two main credit unions. The first one is Equifax and the second one is TransUnion. A credit score is a number that rates how well or how poorly you use your credit. It's based on the information in your credit report. You get points for using credit, credit responsibility, responsibly, for example, by making your payments in full or on time. You lose points if you do not manage credit in a responsible way, for example, making late payments or going over your credit limit. The credit bureaus have a propriety systems for determining credit scores. In Canada, credit scores range from 300 points, which is poor, to 900 points, which is excellent. And the best credit score is 900 points. Your credit score will be damaged if you make late payments or if you miss payments on your credit cards, if you have debts, including parking tickets or other fines sent to you by a collection agency, or if you declare bankruptcy, or if you withhold payments because of your dispute and the lender reports your payments as late. To have a good credit score, you should always make your payments on time and in full. If you can't make full payments, make at least the minimum payment. And if you can't make the minimum payment, contact the lender right away. Ask if you can have a special arrangement to pay the debt. As a consumer, you have the right to expect the marketplace to be fair. You also have the responsibility to be fair and deal with problems quickly. Sales in incentives cannot trick or mislead customers. Contracts must be clear and easy to understand. There is a cooling off period after signing a contract. If you change your mind during this period, you can cancel the contract. If you receive goods that you did not ask for, you do not have to accept or pay for them. Delivery of goods and services must be made on time. If something is wrong with a product or service, the seller must fix the problem in a reasonable amount of time. You have the right to expect that the marketplace will be fair. 
you also have the responsibility to be, to be fair and deal with the problems quickly. Consumer responsibilities. Research and compare products before you buy them. Check the qualifications and reviews of services provided. Follow instructions for products that you buy and make sure you receive everything that you have paid for. So we always should research before we buy. So sometimes we have weekly or um, some sales going on on products. We have promotional code for online shopping. You can also look, for look at flyers to have some special promotional rates. You can read online reviews before buying a big ticket item like a TV. Online shoppers should always check the currency that it is in Canadian dollars. And when ordering from overseas, please make sure you check the customs and other duties involved. It is your responsibility to read the contracts carefully. If you need help reading English, ask for extra time to, to review the contracts. Some of the contracts in Canada include lease or rental agreements, mobile phone service plans, car or business loans, car or truck rental agreements, gym memberships, credit card agreements, insurance policies, and contracts for home renovations. If you have a problem with a product or a service, you can make a complaint. This helps you and future customers. The first step is to call the company explain the problem and ask them to fix it. You may need to speak to the manager or the supervisor. If the problem is not solved, you can write to the company, explain the problem with specific details and do request for a solution like a repair or a refund. And also describe what you will do if they do not fix the problem. If the company does not respond, you have the option to do what you said you will do. You can file a formal complaint to the Ontario Ministry of Government and Consumer Services and to the Better Business Bureau. We have mentioned both these websites on our slide. If the problem involves a large amount of money or a valuable property, you can also file a claim at the Small Claims Court and the website is also listed on this slide. Now moving on to scams. A scam is a fraud and scams can occur in different forms. It can happen over the email or a text scam. It could be an internet scam, a mail scam, a phone or a fax scam, and also an in-person scam. Reputable organizations will never ask for your personal information through your email, or your text. If you get this kind of email, do not click on any links or give any information about yourself. If you have any doubts about where the email came from, make sure to check the identity of the sender. Email scams are usually sent from a private address or a free web mail address such as Yahoo, Hotmail, or Gmail, and not from Government of Canada, which is has the extended gc.ca, or Canada.ca email account. Ignore and delete communications from unknown contacts and update your antivirus on all devices. Do not reply to spam messages. Even to unsubscribe and do not open any attachments or any or follow any of the links. The government of Canada or the police will never use aggressive or threatening language. The Government of Canada will never ask for any sort of payment by telephone, email, or text message. CRA, which is Canada Revenue, Revenue Agency, will never send you an email or text message asking for money or payments via prepaid credit cards, gift cards, or interact e-transfer. 
IRCC will never contact you by telephone, email, or text message asking for your private information. They may sometimes contact you to ask for more documents to continue processing for the application. So you all need to protect yourself. Do not be intimidated by high pressure sales tactics. If a telemarketer tries to get you to buy something or send them or send them money right away, request for information in writing or hang up. Always verify that the organization you're dealing with is legitimate before you take any other action. Verify Canadian charities with Canada Revenue Agency. Verify collection agencies with appropriate provincial agency. Look online for contact information for the company that supposedly called you and call them to confirm. Verify any calls with your credit card company by calling the, by calling the phone number on the back of your credit card. Beware of unsolicited calls where the caller asks you for personal information. Many scams request you to pay fees in advance for receiving goods, services, or a price. It is illegal for a company to ask you to pay for fees upfront before they'll give you a loan. There is no price fee or taxes in Canada. If you want it, it's free. Watch out for urgent looking messages that pop up while you're browsing online. Do not click on them or call the number they provide. No legitimate company will call or claim your computer is infected with a virus. Some websites such as music, game, movie, and adult sites may try to install viruses on malware without your knowledge. Watch out for emails with spelling and formatting errors and be wary of clicking any attachments or links. They may contain viruses or spyware. Make sure you have a very good antivirus software installed and keep it and keep your operating system up to date. Never give anyone remote access to your computer. If you're having problems with your system, bring it to your local technician. Carefully consider who you are sharing explicit videos and photographs with. Do not perform any explicit acts online. Disable your webcam or any other camera connected to your internet when you're not using it. Hackers can get remote, remote access and also record you. What happens if you are a victim of a scam? The first thing is to stay calm. Gather all information about the fraud, including documents, receipts, copies of emails, and text messages. Report the incident to the financial institution that transferred the money. If you are the victim of, a, uh, of an identity fraud, place flags on all your accounts. Change all your passwords and report the fraud to both the credit bureaus, which is Equifax and TransUnion. Report the incident to your local police and get a file number for future reference. If you find suspicious activity on your credit report, update your file with the police. You can also contact the Canadian, Canadian Anti-Fraud Centre at 1-888-495-8501. Scammers often target victims of a fraud a second time or a third time with the promise of recovering money. Always do your due, due diligence and never send any recovery money. Share any updates with your financial institution and the police. Tell family, tell your family, friends, neighbors, and coworkers about your experience. You may prevent someone else from becoming a victim. Reporting a scam, so we can report a scam to the Canadian Anti-Fraud Center. The phone number and the website is mentioned on this slide. The, the Competition Bureau, again, the website is mentioned here. Also the little, Black Book of Scams, and also the Government of Canada. Now what happens if you lose your social insur insurance number? 
if your confirmation of SIN letter or SIN card was stolen or lost, Service Canada will not issue you a new SIN. If you don't remember your SIN, you can find it on your income tax return or you can request a confirmation of your SIN from Service Canada. For, for, for more information on how to apply for a SIN, you can go to um, canada.ca. And if your passport was stolen or is inaccessible or is damaged, you have to report it uh, to, the, to the government again. A Canadian passport is a valuable document that should keep you that you should keep in a safe and a dry place at all times. Once you report a stolen passport or a lost passport, it is no longer valid and you cannot use it for travel. This is to make sure that it isn't used for any fraudulent purposes. When what you should do if your passport is stolen, you should call 1-800-567-6868 and report the details of the loss or the theft. This webinar was brought to you by Orientation to Ontario, which is a bilingual project funded by Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada and also by the Government of Ontario. This program has been designed to expedite and facilitate the settlement of newcomers in Ontario and help them make better informed choices. Our email address is o2o at costi.org and our phone number is 1-855-626-0002. And our website is www.settlement.org slash O2O. If you have any questions, you can please email us and you can even call us at the number and the email mentioned on this slide. Costi Immigrant Services is a multicultural agency specifically focused on providing services to all newcomers who are settling in the greater Toronto area. Costi provides educational, social and employment services to help newcomers become self-sufficient and settled in their new community. Costi in its role as a provincial coordinator of O2O program has brought you this webinar today. Thank you for joining me uh, for this webinar and I hope you have learned some valuable information.